Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islam in Life with me Reza Ghazim. Al Ghafur, the most forgiving, is one of the names of Allah. It is this quality of forgiveness from Allah that allows many Muslims to use the avenue of repentance that is opened up as a result. It is a characteristic that Muslims and people of many religions refer to, which is expected to be inculcated in them as people of faith. When does that forgiveness from Allah apply in the relationship of the Creator with the created? How is it manifested? What is the status of the forgiveness from the Creator and from the created? There are many verses in the Quran and sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on the love, mercy and forgiveness of Allah. In one of the prayers that the Prophet taught, he said, O oh Allah, you are the most forgiving one. You love to forgive, so forgive me. It is wrong to assume at any time that one can find salvation without the forgiveness of Allah. Just as it is important to believe in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah, it is also necessary to base human relations on forgiveness. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was the most forgiving person. He was ever ready to forgive his enemies. You know, we make mistakes uh, every day and night. We make mistakes where we're sinful. Uh, and the only way to renew your intention, the only way to clean yourself is asking forgiveness, asking Allah to forgive if you've ever done anything or if you've ever hurt anyone or if you've ever done anything to anyone. Uh, we always ask Allah to forgive. There is one kind of sin which Allah cannot forgive and that's the sin of shirk ascribing partners with Allah. Other than that, uh, one of the attributes of Allah is He is the most forgiving. Allah is merciful and Allah is uh, the name of Allah. When you start with Allah Azza wa Jalla in the Quran, the first word start with and the first sentence is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It means Allah Azza wa Jalla is given for all days and merciful for everything. To address these and other issues, we have our esteemed guest, Professor Tarek Ramadan. Welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. I wanted to start off by asking you, what are the origins of the concept of forgiveness in Islam? Well, the, the origin is, once again, we should understand that Islam is the last revelation, is following uh, after all the, the, the monotheistic traditions and, and the Jewish, the Christian, and, and before that even uh, Abraham. Who, who is the father of us understanding that uh, we are Muslimun, meaning that we uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that there is one God and we come back to Him. Having said that, there is in this tradition something which is very important. Uh, God, Allah is asking us to come to Him respecting some of the rules and, and straight the sense of responsibility and that sometime we are making uh, mistakes is there from the very beginning with Adam and Hawa, the first two uh, uh, human beings and the first things that they did was a mistake and, and this is what for example there is a very important difference between the Christian tradition and the Catholic tradition saying that there is the original sin and then for them there was the sin and they were forgiven so this is the starting point of everything which is Al-Ghafur he welcomed uh, them coming back to him saying we made a mistake both of them by the way it's not only the women in the Islamic tradition and then they were forgiven meaning that our understanding of human being is with, with, between innocence at the beginning and responsibility and responsibility means you have to make choices and sometimes you are going to follow what is right and sometimes you are you are going to be attracted by what is wrong and this connection to God is to be humble to know that you are in need uh, of him and this is where forgiveness is essential is one of the names of God and, uh, and how is the balance struck between uh, this idea of the consequences of one's actions um, being, you know, appropriately dealt with, that there is a consequence of the actions that you take, and this idea of forgiveness, are they in some ways, uh, you know, 
Is there a contradiction there? In no, there is no contradiction. What we need to understand as, as Muslims, as believers, is that we are accountable. And, and the starting point of, of us from innocence to responsibility, there is a word in Arabic which is mukallafun. Mukallaf is that you have to respond to Allah's call to do what He is expecting you to do and not to do. So, so this is why you respond to the call. Understanding here that you are accountable. You are alone. Every one of us, are, we are coming back to God alone and we are responsible. So we know that we have to respond to this. In between, we know that we are making mistakes. We know that we are not perfect. We know that we need uh, Allah's uh, presence and mercy. And this is exactly the point, is that you know that you are accountable, but you know also that you have means to avoid uh, the consequences of some of your actions if afterward, after you made them, you come back to uh, God with your consciousness and you ask for forgiveness. So it's two things that you, you need to understand. Nothing is definitive in what you are doing. You can, you can be forgiven. And then second, it's your connection to God to understand that at the end, you're not going to be saved because of his justice only. You're going to be saved because of his mercy, moreover. So this mercy is that, that he, because we are not perfect, and we know every one of us, and this is something which is the inter universal intimacy. We all know that we are not perfect. We all know how much of uh, greediness, of violence, of uh, 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 selfishness we have inside. So it's an ongoing struggle, and what we know is that we are going to be saved out of his mercy and his forgiveness. And do we as human beings have a role to play in inculcating this concept of forgiveness um, within the Muslim culture? Oh, yes, that, that's very important. You know, in the Quran what we have is that uh, we need to understand that what we have to do with other human beings is to spread the message. And, and this was said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, You have to spread the message. And we are... Uh, uh, we are going to judge the people. Why is it so important? Because in a community of believers, you have to be very cautious not to end up judging the people on what you see. And this is why you have in the Quran, in akramakum indallahi atqaqum, the best, the most uh, dignified among you is the one who has the deep, the deepest uh, God consciousness. This is something which is invisible, so be careful. First, the fact that you have to learn forgiveness, it's you have to learn to be with the people the way you want God to be with you. And this mm. is something which is essential here. Man satara mu'minan fi dunya satarahu Allahu fi dunya wal akhirah. The one who is covering his brother or his sister in this world, God is going to to cover his mistakes in this world and in the hereafter. So there is something which is coming back to you to, that you need to understand. The fact that you have to deal with other human beings has to be done in the light of the way you want to be treated and the want to be uh, uh, with God, which means that we all know that we are not perfect. So it, there are two things in forgiveness is, look, look at yourself. Come back to your own self, come back to your own heart, and you know how much you are uh, hiding things, that you make uh, uh, mistakes, that you have weaknesses. So what are you expecting from God? His mercy and His forgiveness. Now turn your face towards your brothers and sisters in humanity and stop being a judge and be a brother. And the brother is helping his brother or his sister to be a better human, human being and not to be a, a tribunal, a court. So this is something which is essential in the way we deal with our brothers and sisters. And unfortunately, today in our Muslim communities around the world and Muslim majority countries, we are much more the judges of the visible side and not enough the forgivers or the people who are forgiving the, the things that we cannot see because we have to help our brothers and sisters to be better human beings. So at the end, your intentions are questioned. Are you here to judge or are you here to help? But was it not ever thus? Was it not always the case that this is how the communities um, judge rather than 
forgive? I mean, but has that not always are, existed? That's very human. You are right. But this is exactly where we are. Islam, our religious teachings are helping us to go from basic humanity to spiritual humanity, to spiritual, the spiritual dimension. So it means what? Check your tongue. Check your... And you, you have this in Surat al uh, 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 Al-Hujurat, it's a very, it's a 49, uh, the Surah, it's all about this, it's all that you are judging people, judging human beings and say, check your mouth, check your heart, check your mind. Why, what does it mean? Yes, it's normal for me to judge you. It's spiritual for me to keep it and to control it and to help you to be better. It's normal for me when I see you making a mistake to take over, to have some power on you. It's spiritual to help you to be a better uh, person. So this is, it's normal. Yes, it's, it's the basic humanity, but we are not here to accept only our humanity. Anything in the spiritual life has to do with a jihad. A jihad is this effort to resist the natural and to reform for the spiritual. To resist the natural and to reform in the light of the spiritual. This is forgiveness. This is where we are expected to be deeper in the way we look at things. And you have it so many times in the Quran to the point that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was saying, I am asking Allah, God, for forgiveness 70 times a day. And in another hadith, 100 times a day. Meaning what? He was the one who didn't need this because he was the best among humanity and still this was the way for him to show and to uh, 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 bear witness to all the believers that this is the relationship that you have with, with God. This is it. This is you come to him by saying, I'm trying my best. And I know I'm not, I know I'm not perfect. And I know that the only way for me to be saved is through your mercy and through your presence and through your light. And one of the things that we sometimes need to think about within that context is that it's very, all very well for us to look at it introspect and do it on an individual level. But is society or Muslim society set up for trying to give that space for people to develop? And sh is there anything around that that can be perhaps looked at within uh, Muslim society? But we have to go from the individual, as you are saying, that this is the starting point of spirituality. And, and it is said in the Quran, Every one of you who is behaving against her, her or his own interest in the sight of God, do not despair uh, God's mercy. God forgives all your sins. So this is a personal journey that you need to take. But then it comes to to you le dealing with with your, your 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 brothers and sisters in humanity within the Muslim community and outside. That this is why this education it's it's very important because at the end at the end we need to ask ourselves: Am I going to be a better person through your judgment or through your forgiveness? With the two of them, I need you to recall the limits and I need you to help me to see the way. This is education. Give me the limits, show me the way. But not put the limits, condemn me, and that's it. And this is the problem that we have. We, in fact, we need to deal with our brothers and sisters in humanity the way we are dealing with our daughters and, and, and sons. What are we doing? We know that they are making mistakes. We know that they, are, they have weaknesses. But we are not judging to the point that uh, it's over. And no one has the right to have the final judgment on me. You know why? Because I could be the worst on earth and just maybe 30 seconds before my death, I'm converting to something which is, and you don't know. So you never know. And, and the, the, the best way to start this uh, 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 journey towards forgiveness is, is to remember, Allahu A'lam, God knows best. So be careful with your judgment. We would like to make this program as interactive as possible and value your comments. This is what you have said this week. This week we asked, Can Allah forgive any sin? Ali from Morocco said, Yes, Allah can forgive any sin, because he is the epitome of forgiveness. Hamida from Belgium said, 
Allah will forgive any sin except for shirk. Shirk is a major sin and the only one that Allah will not forgive. And a deal from Pakistan said, Allah can forgive anything, but there are conditions to seeking forgiveness. One has to feel true remorse and ask sincerely for forgiveness from Allah. That's all the comments we have for this week. If you'd like to have your comments featured on the show, be sure to follow us on Facebook or join us on Twitter. Well, one of the things that happens within many Muslim cultures is that when people are just about to go off on Hajj and perform the pilgrimage, um, they ask forgiveness for anything that they've, uh, in the way that they might have wronged other people around them. What's, um, how does that, why is that important? Why is it done at that specific point in time? And it's, it's become a kind of like a cultural perhaps thing. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's becoming a cultural way of, you know, I'm leaving now to, to go uh, to the pilgrimage. In fact, we should do this every day of our life. It's very important to have our, our, you know, it's like a debt that you have towards your brothers and sisters in humanity and before leaving say, okay, I want this to be safe. I, I want to be safe if anything uh, happens. But in fact, today, we don't know if tomorrow we are going to be alive. So, so it has to be done on, it's, it should be our way of life, which is we have to uh, be clear with our brothers and sisters and yet not to keep things. And, 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 and this is something which is the, 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 the state of emergency when it comes to your own life and forgiveness should be there everywhere. Now, when it comes to uh, the pilgrimage is for two things. The first is it's a journey. You never know if you are going to come back. So, so I prefer before leaving just to be on the safe side of the spiritual equation. Forgive me. Like this, if I go back to God, it's, 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 it's the, 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 the things are going to be uh, 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 solved. The second dimension is the very essence of, uh, of the pilgrimage. The pilgrimage is when you go there with the, 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 the best of your intentions to come close to God. This is where everything is removed. Everything is forgot, for, forgiven and forgotten at the same time. It's like you are coming to a new life. So you better solve everything and then uh, the, the whole Hajj with your, uh, the pilgrimage, with your intentions is going to make you a new person. So you are going, you want to come back purified with an environment which has been purified before, before uh, you leave. So there is something here which is in the Islamic tradition is, is always like this. Remember that the Prophet, peace be upon him, just when he was feeling that uh, he was going to leave, and, and he got the verses telling him that's now it's the it's o it's over. You are going to come back to God. He he, he wanted to, to to he asked in the mosque if there was somebody that he had a debt towards him that he had to solve the whole thing because this is the way you have to leave the country and by, uh, to leave life and to leave this world, uh, this this life which is very important. And you know this is something which is in all the traditions you come back to the. Greek tradition, and you find that even Socrates, when he knew that he was going to die, wanted to solve all the debts in, in order to say, this is the best way to be forgiven. Mm. One of the things that um, uh, we often wonder about is w when you do this for Hajj, and that link that you're asking forgiveness from God when you go for Hajj to become closer, what is more important, um, forgiveness that, God, that Allah gives you or forgiveness that your fellow human being gives you? Is that even the right question to ask? It's, it's, no, it's a good question because the two are connected and you are not going to get God's forgiveness if you are not going to get your brothers and sisters in humanity's forgiveness. It's connected. And sometimes it's more difficult to ask for your brothers and sisters forgiveness than to ask to Allah. Allah is welcoming and, and we know this that he is al Ghafur, as we, you mentioned at the beginning and in his Tawab he's always coming back when you come to him and he is the one who is al Wadud who is uh, uh, so kind with you to the point that in the, the hadith it is said that my mercy in rahmati sabaqat ghadabi my mercy comes before even my uh, 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 warth and, and, and this is where it's uh, uh, very important for us to understand this and then you have to understand that to come back to, he, to, to get his mercy, you should be very clear with your 
fellow human beings. So this is where you have to get this uh, uh, forgiveness coming from your uh, fellow human beings. You, you quoted a part of the Quran and you said to coming back. What, can you elaborate on that? What, do you, what, does, that, what does that mean that, uh, when you come back in that, in that sense? It's, tawbah, it's a very important concept because it's not, it's not only al-istighfar that you are asking for Allah, uh, from Allah, His forgiveness. It's tawbah, I'm coming back to you. What does it mean? It means that there is one hadith and, and many in fact, a hadith saying that at the very moment you are making or doing something wrong or making a mistake, you're not truly a believer at that very moment. Why? Because at that very moment, you forgot that He is with you. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara, which is al-ihsan, the excellence in Islam is to worship God as if you were seeing Him. And sometimes you forget. So this ghafla, this very instant moment where you are forgetting that He's here, it's that you left Him. Mm-hmm. Now you have to come back. A tawbah is I come back to you because I forgot. So the sin was there. So now I'm coming back with my heart, with my consciousness. And the tawbah has three conditions. First, you have to regret, regret what you did. So, so, so this, uh, I don't want to, to, to do it again. So first, you are not happy with what you did. You don't want to do it again. And you have to be uh, confident that God with this sincerity is going to remove everything. So not only you come with your heart, but you need to come with your confidence. If he is asking you to come, it means that he's going to remove this uh, from you with your sincerity and with your... So a tawbah, it's important because it's the very un- uh, understanding of what is sin. It's the very un- understanding of, of where you are, is that sometimes, because Sometimes you forget. And you have in the Quran, رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا نَسِينَا means if we forget and we do, uh, uh, we make the mistake and we fail. So first you forget and then you do this. And then you have to come back, which is coming back is to remember. Is that Toba that you are talking yeah. about, the get out of jail free card that, um, that we have, that, you know, uh, ultimately, you can say sorry, and all is forgiven, and then you know you can carry on. So it's almost a a way. Um, it gives you license to actually do the wrong thing because you know at the end of the day that the tawbah option is available. You've got the that, old get that, out that, jail free card. That's a very good question, and you know, in fact, some who want uh, some people who want to play with with this. Okay, and at the end of the day, you know. Some of our brothers and sisters, I'm young, let me do what I want, and then I will come back to him, and he will... No, there is something which is essential here. And, and you have this in the mystical traditions, but it's the heart of Islam. That, for example, you know, that we have one hadith saying, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Everything is out of your intentions. It's, it's your intention, that, and you can't play with your intention. You can't play with your sincerity. So if you are sincere, you can't just say, I'm going to do the wrong things and then I will come back. No, that's not the way. It's, this is playing, and if you can't play with human beings, you can't play with God. Uh, this is why you have to be serious about this. And I like this story of a sheikh who once uh, had somebody who came and say, I did this and this and this and this, and am I going to be forgiven? And say, uh, yes, you are going to be forgiven. And as an, an, another guy came and said exactly the same. I'm de- I did this, this, this. And he said, no, you are not going to be forgiven. And one of the students was there and said, how come you said yes to the first one and you said no to the second? He said, the first one came and he did it before. He was asking after he did. The second was asking, if I do this, am I going? Oh, no. So if you know that we are going to do wrong and you are expecting to be forgiven. That's not, you are playing and your sincerity uh, is not there. It's, you, you, you can't, you can't play with sins. You can't play with sincerity. You can't play with coming close to God and expecting from Him. Because at the end, every one of us should understand when it comes to forgiveness, we all are, we all want this as something which is deep, but we should know that God is looking at our hearts, not our words, and not our, uh, the way we play with some of these issues when we are dealing with human beings. We've touched on the concept of forgiveness, and it's been introduced in different ways in the Quran. To truly admit one's mistake to another and to ask for forgiveness is perhaps one of the hardest things for a person to do. 
Often there is no recompense for the pain caused and the word sorry seems a pathetic substitute. Perhaps it is precisely because of this that so much emphasis is given on creating a culture of forgiveness that through the person's ability to forgive, the beauty of Allah's attribute of forgiveness can shine through. The time is up for today's topic. I would like to thank Professor Tariq Ramadan for his views on the topic and of course all of you at home for watching. Goodbye until the next time and another edition of Islam in Life.